Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and I have a short video, maybe one of the shortest ones that I've ever produced for you that kind of stretches our beginning introduction to related rates to uh, a slightly new level and it's kind of getting you ready for the full-blown word problem that you would see with related rates. So let's look at some Mo related rates, a numerical perspective, example two. If you watched the last video, uh, we talked a little bit about how you could demonstrate a graphical representation about different water vessels, different containers being filled with water and how the height and the volume interact with each other, how their changes uh, are related. But in this example, I want to move down to this number two, where it asks you to write the following statements mathematically. These are going to be very small subcomponents of the problems that you're going to be doing. So if you see a question that says something to the effect of John is growing at the rate of three inches per year, what we want to do is translate that from English into mathematics. And to do that, we need to understand that we have to call this concept something that's very viable in the calculus world. This is clearly a rate. We have the word rate in there. And so we have to connect that idea with derivative because that's really what the whole first semester of calculus is, is all about, the derivative. So for this rate, we can use our wonderful notation that, that uh, Leibniz had developed for us. And we'll say the derivative of something with respect to time. And that's really important because every one of our problems in the related rate topic is going to have this time element as the denominator. Now what you want to call the numerator is really up to you. John is growing. We could call it the derivative of J for John, the derivative of G for growing. I might use H because it's kind of referring to John's height. It just makes sense, but it doesn't matter. That's a very cosmetic decision. Then you just simply set this equal to the numerical value that's given, which in this case is 3, and that's it. That's all there is to it. You don't even have to put the units there. You know, a lot of times math teachers don't put units as they work through their solutions. It drives our science teachers crazy. But the units are always going to be things that we kind of consider at the end of the problem. Let's take a look at B and see if that makes sense. My mutual fund is shrinking by four cents per day. Yeah, boy, that's the truth. So we're going to write this as a derivative problem. And we can call the mutual fund whatever you want. M for mutual, money. F for fund, I'll go with F. That's kind of fun. So the derivative of F with respect to T. And then because it says this fund is shrinking, shrinking, we got to be careful your derivative is going to be negative. You have to think about this negatively charged word shrinking as invoking this negative sign. Now the four cents per day, honestly, I don't really care. If you put four, it's not the end of the world. Some people will be like, no, 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 it's got to be 0.04 because it's measured in cents. We don't really know what else is around the, this problem in the context. Maybe I'm asking for something that you can express in terms of cents, which four would be fine. If it's in terms of dollars, then we'd say 0.04. That's really not what's important here. That negative is what I was looking for. I would love it if you would care to pause the video and maybe try to work out part C and D on your own and then just resume the video and see if you got them right. Did you do it? Welcome back, if so. So the radius of a circle increasing by four. We're going to say the derivative of R. That makes a lot of sense, r for radius, with respect to t. And because we're increasing, we have a positive 4. And then for part d, the volume of a cone is decreasing by 2 cubic inches per second. I see the word volume. I think that's a good variable to use. Just as a little FYI here, anytime that I'm using some kind of a geometric formula concept like volume, area, I typically will use a capital letter. So just be advised about that as you, as you watch future videos. Because we are decreasing, I'm going to throw a negative in there. And the value that I'm decreasing by is 2. And there you go. That's the opening stage of interpreting some of these derivatives so that we can be better equipped to handle the full-blown related rate story problems that come in my next few videos. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching, and we see you next time.